For several decades now, astronomers have been haunted by a certain feature of the location of dwarf galaxies, satellites of our galaxy. And for them, the most disturbing thing about this issue is that such an orderly arrangement contradicts the Lambda CDM cosmology. Data from the Gaia telescope yielded even more astonishing results, making the task even more difficult for scientists. And this is indeed extremely difficult to explain within the framework of the generally accepted model of the structure and evolution of galaxies. But if you look at the already very controversial aspect of the structure of galaxies from a different angle, and the solution becomes obvious. And a very interesting fact from the past of our galaxy is revealed to us. And we'll talk about this in this video. It all started when astronomers noticed that the satellites of our galaxy have a polar arrangement. In other words, if you mentally divide the galaxy in the disk plane into two parts, then the poles of the galaxy will be located in directions perpendicular to the plane of the disk. Like the poles of our planet divided by the equator. And most of our satellite galaxies are located in the direction of these poles. Further studies showed that these galaxies form a disk structure elongated towards the poles. But why bother with this, you ask? Well, the satellite galaxies have an ordered structure, so what of that? But the fact is that such a structure is practically impossible within the framework of Lambda CDM cosmology. And the existence of this structure seems to hint to us that Lambda CDM cosmology, or otherwise cosmology with cold dark matter, is not correct. This fact haunts scientists. Indeed, according to this cosmology, satellite galaxies should be located chaotically and isotropically. That is, disordered and identical in all directions. But that's not all. In Lambda CDM simulations, galaxies like ours should have hundreds of dark matter subhalos, in which visible matter should accumulate. In other words, a galaxy similar to ours should have hundreds of such satellite galaxies, not tens. And this fact adds fuel to the growing fire of doubt. Although, recently, many satellite galaxies have begun to be discovered. But this is not exactly what was needed, and another problem arose with them. But let's leave this topic for another video. The third release of data from the Gaia telescope has completely puzzled researchers. It turned out that of the total number of satellite galaxies, 60% are included in the above-described disk structure. But the surprise was that of the remaining 40% of the satellites, half form another flat structure, which is perpendicular to both the first structure and the disk of the galaxy. So, how can we try to prove the correctness of Lambda CDM cosmology with such a result? Well, you can try to explain everything as a banal accident or coincidence. Allegedly, we live in a unique moment when the orbits of satellite galaxies randomly created this structure. But we see a similar polar distribution in the neighboring Andromeda galaxy, as well as in another neighboring galaxy, Centaurus A. How many other galaxies with a similar distribution of satellites are there that we cannot observe because the brightness of satellite galaxies is usually very low? And it turns out that even under such conditions, we can say that about a quarter of the brightest neighboring lenticular galaxies have a similar structure. That is, we can say with confidence that what we observe in our galaxy is not some kind of accident. And all this looks more like it is some kind of regular phenomenon that has not yet been studied. Some researchers tried to explain this by a special flow of intergalactic filaments not into the disk but perpendicular to it. And this explanation does not sound very convincing because there is practically no evidence that such filaments fuel galaxies. Astronomers have been trying for a very long time to discover how such filaments flow into the disk in order to prove one of the versions of the evolution of spiral galaxies. But in the vast majority of cases, they see the opposite, as gas flowing out of galaxies. In addition, to the surprise of the researchers themselves, it turned out that for some reason circular or near-circular orbits dominate in the movement of these satellite galaxies. And their movement itself has some synchronicity, which generally looks extremely strange. Because in order to create a system of bodies with circular orbits, it is necessary that these bodies fall into the gravitational field of the galaxy, at a certain angle and at a certain speed. In all other cases, the orbits will be elliptical. In other words, it seems as if this structure was artificially created by someone. Especially if we take into account some of its synchronicity or, 
as the authors call it, coherence. But so far, modern astrophysics cannot offer a better explanation. But viewers of my channel know something that could explain this situation much better. And now I will give you this explanation. And I will begin my explanation with one interesting fact that characterizes not only our galaxy, but all spiral galaxies as a class as a whole. You may have seen images of galaxies with jets emanating from the galactic core. These jets come in different sizes and energies. In high-energy jets, matter moves at a speed sometimes very close to the speed of light. Scientists suggest that matter near a supermassive black hole, under the influence of a very strong magnetic field, is accelerated and ejected in the form of such jets. And the nuclei of galaxies with jets are called active nuclei or quasars. So, an interesting fact is that the supermassive black hole in our galaxy, as in all spiral galaxies, does not eject matter in such jets. And this is one of the most interesting mysteries of astrophysics. Only in very rare cases have astronomers observed jets from spiral galaxies. And almost always they are very weak and short-lived. Most often, jets are observed in elliptical galaxies and sometimes in lenticular ones. But what's the problem? Why can black holes make jets in elliptical and lenticular galaxies, but not in spiral ones? Are there other black holes in spiral galaxies? Or are there other laws of physics at work there? Okay. Let's go there through another way. How do spiral galaxies differ from lenticular and elliptical galaxies? Elliptical galaxies have different shapes, but not disk shapes. And even if the disk is present in them, it is weakly expressed. Galaxies with a more pronounced disk are already classified as lenticular. But there are lenticular galaxies that are practically indistinguishable from spiral ones. They also have a large disk. And the key feature of spiral galaxies is the spiral pattern in the disk. Maybe the absence of jets in spiral galaxies has something to do with this? Take a closer look at the spiral pattern of the galaxy. What does he look like? Can you imagine that a spiral galaxy also has a quasar or an active nucleus? But its jets are not directed perpendicular to the disk, but into the disk. And the quasar itself rotates, and therefore turns out to be a spiral pattern. Sounds logical, don't you agree? At least the absence of jets across the disk becomes clear. But this idea also solves many other problems in astrophysics. For example, the mystery of the formation of O and B-class stars the cause of most supernova explosions in spiral arms, the G-dwarf paradox, and others. And this idea with jets in a disk has a lot of evidence. And even direct observation of these jets inside the disk. Also, such a turn of events could not but affect the structure and evolution of galaxies. And this idea of jets in the disk gives a completely different model for the evolution of galaxies, which agrees much better with observations. All this is described in detail in video number 10. Wait. How does this relate to the topic of the video? We are talking about our satellite galaxies. What do quasar jets and spiral patterns have to do with it? But the fact is that sometimes, for reasons not yet established, the magnetic field around a supermassive black hole changes and a short-term reorientation of the jets occurs. And at this moment, in the galaxy, the jets are directed across the disk and sometimes even rotate across the disk. But if this reorientation is long-term, then the spiral galaxy loses its main distinguishing feature and becomes lenticular. And the jets, over time, create a gas disk, and then a stellar disk. Some lenticular galaxies have precisely these polar disks of gas and stars. There is even a lenticular galaxy in which, according to researchers, the formation of such a disk occurs. And according to the map of gas velocities in this galaxy, you can see these very jets of gas flowing from the core. That is, we can say that there is a clear correlation. If the galaxy is spiral, then it does not have vertical jets. And if the galaxy is lenticular, then it has jets perpendicular to the disk, and sometimes even has a polar disk, but does not have a spiral. It should be noted here that a significant part of the galaxies that we call lenticular are only intermediate between elliptical and spiral. It is no coincidence that astronomers notice that lenticular galaxies can be divided into two groups that differ in characteristics. One of these groups includes intermediate between elliptical and spiral. 
and the second includes spiral ones, in which the direction of the jets has changed and they have lost the spiral pattern. Therefore, there is a certain part of lenticular galaxies in which there are neither polar structures nor visible jets. In fact, they are spiral, it's just that the jets in them are weak and we don't see this clear pattern. Based on the above, spiral galaxies should not have polar structures. Unless there was a short-term reorientation of the jets in their life. And it seems that this is exactly what has happened to our galaxy. And perhaps more than once. And one time the rotation of the jets was in one plane, and the next time in another, perpendicular plane. That is, we can confidently say that the jets of our galaxy came out of the disk and for some time our galaxy looked like something similar. And at that moment it lost its spiral and became lenticular. Although I do not exclude that the number of jets may be more than two, and at this moment, there are also jets in the disk. Our galaxy had such an interesting past. Although I'm not entirely sure that this was only in the past. Take a look at this. These are the so-called Erosita bubbles, captured by the probe of the same name. Or, in other words, an X-ray image of our galaxy. Take a closer look at this yellow drawing. Don't these yellow outlines remind you of anything? This mirror anti-symmetry is painfully familiar. What if it's like this? Do you recognize? I don't presume to say anything, but this drawing very much resembles a spiral pattern of galaxies. If this is so, then there must be jets that create this pattern. Yes, but if the plane of gas movement is perpendicular to us, then the gas movement will not be easy to notice. But just a short distance from the supermassive black hole in our galaxy, astronomers have detected a likely part of this jet. But a similar part from the second jet has not yet been discovered. But according to researchers, the jets that created these bubbles are direct. Since in astrophysics jets are generally considered to be straight. And this comes from the fact that the cause of these jets should be the accretion disk, which in turn, based on the conservation law, should not change its position and orientation. But as you understand, straight jets do not explain this pronounced asymmetry in any way. But unfortunately, so far there is too little cumulative data to say anything definite. Therefore, we will wait for further research. If anyone has any doubts that the jets can suddenly change direction, then astronomers find a lot of evidence that this is exactly what happens. And if anyone thinks that I have far-fetched everything, then look at this. This is the galaxy I mentioned at the beginning of the video. This is one of the nearby galaxies in which a polar structure of satellites was found. It looks like an ordinary lenticular galaxy. But if we look at it in the radio wave range, we will see jets that probably created this polar structure. And it must also be said that sometimes these structures created by the jets are not polar. I'm sure you have a lot of questions. And most of the answers to your questions are in video number 10. This video is about 2 hours long. But a lot is told there in detail, and you will understand much more than I touched on in this video. But if you still have questions, Ask them in the comments.